everyone, well, assalamu alaikum. This is me, Tazmin Tayyib Tanisha from Tussal Bangladesh, and this is an interview session with the one and only, the GOAT, Mr. Safwan Mustafa. So, sir, how are you doing? I'm doing good, but uh, before you interview me, I've got a question mm -hmm. to you. So, the GOAT, so the which goat. GOAT is it? The one with the dots and the capital letters, or the one with the small letters and without the dots? The first one, definitely. Uh, what, what was the first one? Um, the capital letters with the dots. Okay, then it's fine. Okay, yep. Okay, so I'm going to be interviewing him today and, well, are you ready? Always. Okay, so my first question is actually pretty simple, which is, can you please tell everyone about the journey of Tussle? Okay, sure. So it was 2020 when I first joined Tussle Bangladesh and it's been four and a half years at Tesla Bangladesh. At first, I was recognized by Yasu Sir through my presentation skills. There was a challenge called the February Presentation Challenge. So, you know, you need someone to record the video for you. And my mother, my father, both of them are pretty much busy. So I made everyone my victim, I being the culprit. So even my housemaid became the victim. Even she recorded some of my videos. So I was very much passionate about making videos. Alhamdulillah, as the years passed on, um, I also got some courses from Tesla Bangladesh offered by Yasser. So he said, uh, him being inspired from other institutions, uh, he told me specifically that we have got so much of potential, so let's put that into some use and Yep, I was the first one who made a video course at Tessal Bangladesh and it's still the biggest general knowledge course in the world, Alhamdulillah. And again, the next two years, I have made nine more courses. In total, I've got 11. And uh, thankful for everything. Uh, the way Yasser contributed, he's not only a teacher, but also a preacher. And my relationship with him is a very unique one. And it's pretty much rare in the country. Overall, it's a complete win-win situation mm -hmm. from all the sides. Okay, that was brilliant. Thank you so much. And my next question to you is, can you please give me some tips and tricks about how you can control the kids and like just how you make the kids behave in the classroom? See, uh, one thing, all of us have got three types of teachers. One who is completely strict like doesn't allow you to do anything yeah. that can be your mother as well and <laughs> uh, second one is completely friendly mm -hmm. like total friendly totally teacher friendly, yeah. but the toughest one is being a mix of bit of strictness and also friendliness mm -hmm. so i had to earn it from the students like they're not afraid of me they and i'm very much friendly to them but certain cases I'm very much strict. Like, you need to sit straight in the classroom. And you know it very well as well. I do. So, they sit straight and you need to earn this respect. And how you do it is you need to dominate them through your knowledge. Okay, so your knowledge has to be very much versatile. Mm -hmm. And people respect you not through your age, but through your knowledge that you possess. So, that would be my answer. Okay, that was amazing to know and my almost uh, we're at the end of the interview and this is my third question which is um what would you call the like what would you call a person who teaches very nicely i mean um if i clarify the question how can you be a good teacher like what are the tips see uh, a good teacher is very much punctual number one because time is everything and number two, I would say, is that mix of being friendly and strict. Number three is one who involves the students, like Yasser says. So in the football pitch, the coach doesn't play. The players do, right? The coach trains them up, and that's the role of the teacher. So it's a one-way traffic in, in the class. Most of the cases it is, but when you do it activity-based, or questions based, it's, you know, both ways of traffic. And that's what you need in the class. So yeah, 
these are the few things. Okay, thank you so much. And then my last question for this interview session is, you know, we have a term called learning by teaching, right? right. So would you please explain that? So I believe in both the methodologies. Number one is LBT and LBD. LBT, as you said, learning by teaching. And number two is learning by doing. See, as students, we used to believe that teachers have so less work. They just only check the copies. Students have to study so many things. But when you become the teacher, you realize, no, before a teacher teaches you something, he or she needs to go through that, number one. And number two is how she will present, he or she will present the topic to you. So that's another factor to be remembered, how to control the class. See, a teacher, we all have one brain, but multiple brain cells work at the same time when you are a teacher. So being a teacher is very tough, and when you try to teach something, you need to have perfect knowledge regarding that subject matter. And that's why when you go to teach someone, you clarify everything, you clarify the topic, and that's why you're learning, you're also learning and teaching at the same time. Once a very wise person said, and that is our Yasi sir, he's very wise, right? And he has got lots of wisdom, and mm -hmm. I try to collect it every day. Yeah. He said that if you learn something and can't explain it to a kid, that means that you didn't understand what you learned. That's not proper learning. So that's how the LBT approach works. And number two is LBD. I've mentioned another thing, learning by doing. Let's take ICT, for example, Information and Computer Technology. So there, say you would l love to learn an Excel trick. Mm -hmm. So when you browse, when you browse, you make some mistakes on your own. You don't have a proper guide. That time you're completely alone. That time your brain cells activate. And when you browse around, we call it surfing in computer language. And when you actually surf on your computer, you will face multiple obstacles during that time. Mm -hmm. And those obstacles make your learning even stronger because no one can ask a question and stop you from answering it because you're very much clear to yourself regarding the concept, because you have gone through every stage of learning. And this is why to make the concept much clearer and to make it much better, we follow these two methodologies. Hope that answered your question. Okay, so that was brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay, so with that being said, let's end this interview session right here. Hope you enjoyed and yeah, Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum everyone.